you guys have. So shout out your questions. Let me know and uh, what you want to know and it should be good. So this is seven minutes when Seether's been pressuring out front your third. Good luck, have fun, guys. I just wanted to give Probe a little heads up on exactly what's going on. Because um, I've, I've had this show where I've restarted it at like kind of bad times and a player hasn't realized where the army is. Oh, shit. <laughs> like that. Fuck, I didn't realize the oracles were flying in. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Well, he loses both oracles this time, so that's gonna go. That's gonna go better for Seether, right? That's that's definitely gonna go better for Seether. So, the whole idea is Probe is meant to play the same style, the same you know, the same push. He's meant to play the same stuff, and this really gives us an opportunity to see if Seether's defense will actually work. I hope you guys can excuse the the rustling of plastic. I've been streaming for um, seven hours now, and I haven't had any food since before I started. So I'm just snacking on a few nuts while we queue up this next game. Let's throw this back on Seether's vision as he brings this next drops across the map. When we rewind, guys, only the player who lost changes up their strategy. And often, as in this case, Seether isn't choosing to change his strategy. He wants to play the same style. He's just making small adjustments. Sometimes we have a player who says, oh, I don't know how to make this style work against their style. I'm going to change it up completely. This time we see he's managed his pressure a lot better. He's finding these openings, and he's got these liberators coming out behind this. He sees a counter push coming across the map right now. I think he's sieged up those liberators. He's still doing damage there. Widow mine sieged. Because the oracles died, it's really bad. It's really bad for Probe because he can't detect the Widow Mines. But the Liberators weren't sieged on the right path. Force Field's brutal on the ramp. Great movement here by Probe. If Seether can hang on, he's in a good spot. He did some good damage with that push. There's still no splash on the way for Probe. What's he going to do? You gotta siege up, you gotta siege up. That's a scary army. Holy shit, that's such a scary force, man. Oh, his Medivax! His Medivax is caught out in the middle of the map, man. He needs to get them back to this bio. His bio is wounded, man. <laughs> he's okay, so he's managed to distract the gateway units enough to get his bio back um, to the Medivax, but it's gonna take a while to heal. Oh, he's doing a drop at the same time. That's fantastic. Look at that, double Widow Mine drop in the midst of this. Oh my god, guys. Only five kills. That kind of sucks, but he doesn't have the APM to micro it, and that's fine. Oh, shit, 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 shit. I think he's done it. I think he's done it. See if he manages to hold on. It's a lot of adapts, but yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Look at the supply. Whenever, whenever you're gonna make a surprise comment as a caster, you just hear Todd's voice. You're just like, wait. <laughs> Rather than saying, is he gonna do it? You just look down at the supply quickly, check yourself, and you're like, nah, he's not gonna do it. <laughs> Let's save myself from making a dumb comment. Um, you guys can let me know what you think of watching first person camera view. I personally really like it because I feel we get to get in the head of the player who's just changed up their strategy. And then, assuming Seether wins this, which he really should, we then get to watch from Probe's point of view in the next game. And we get to like really kind of think about how both of these guys are changing up their strategy and think about it from a Terran perspective, from a Protoss perspective. So I think it's like one of the most useful things for helping improve your play is um, having this sort of analysis. <clears throat> Yeah, get those nuts going in chat, guys. I'm snacking on the nuts. Everyone's nuts, man. Of course, guys, if you are a sub who's just tuned in, a couple of new emotes, check them out. Have some fun with them. I've got heaps more that hopefully will be coming out over the next few weeks um, once I get them all uploaded and everything. <clears throat> nice little bit of pressure here from Probe. He's like, you can see he's forcing this multitasking out of Seether. 
But Seath is like staying really solid. He's like, nah, I'm gonna keep pushing. I'm not gonna like let you pull me back. I know I've got an advantage. I'm not gonna let you catch up. You know, Probe's trying to get out disruptors, but he's not gonna give him time. He, he doesn't know about the disruptors. We know about that, but he knows that Probe will be going for some sort of comeback mechanism. Storm, Colossi, disruptors. Probably disruptors or storm, since they've got a lot more damage potential than Colossi. For you guys who aren't too familiar with Seether, by the way, um, I think everyone in Australia basically uh, through most of last year got to the point where we just said unequivocally he is the best Australian player. Um, like when, when he's on form, which he was for most of last year, oh my god, he's so good. He was crushing. He started finally getting to the point where he could beat Iagas in TVT, which was his weakest matchup. And he was just so good. Um, I actually beat him in a, a tournament like a month or two ago. And I was really surprised. Um, so, yeah, he didn't do so well in the last WCS qualifiers, but I really hope that's, like, instilled his passion. And I think you can see here his level is still incredible. Um, and I think he's going to be practicing really hard for WCS Yan Shiping, um, which is, of course, the big next WCS tournament. And he's going to try and finish this off with a Doom Drop. Great way to, to use your mobility here. Let's, let's take a look at Probe. Does Probe realize what's up? No, he has no idea. He's like, let's do a desperate counter push. And he's going to realize, oh, shit. <laughs> this is that moment where you wish you had a DT shrine and you're like, maybe, maybe I can break their production. But um, actually, Seetha being really greedy trying to defend so far out, but he's just going to destroy everything back at home. Um, these Marines and Marauders just walking past the probes um, to come on in there. Third being forced to lift, <clears throat> but that's a lot of 2-1 bio up against the just 2-0 Adept Stalkers, as long as he evades those disruptor shots, he will be just fine. And the CC gets out, as do all the SCVs. The production is going down in the main. Seath is sieging up the ramp, but uh, there's not even a risk of that. Oh! Oh, he focused down all of the disruptors there. Holy shit, that was actually sick. I'm going to show you guys that, that last little bit of micro, because that was so cool. While I get probe on the call. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, hey! Probu! GG, man! Uh, well played these last couple of games. Yeah, not really. <laughs> not really? <laughs> so, um, what are your what are your thoughts on that last one? Obviously, it was. Uh, sometimes this happens with the resuming from replay where you re go and lose an or uh, a pair of oracles. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That it was, was funny. a slightly awkward resume timing. And that was a, a pretty big thing right because then you lose your revelation and a lot of your detection as well right well i mean yeah but i was still in a fine position i mean there's not much to analyze i just yolo engaged and that was a poor choice okay so you think if you just kind of just chilled there defend you know defended your natural and just kept you know playing playing forwards and weren't just like yolo let's attack this because i mean you're doing a good job with with delaying the third right like you forced it to to lift there you got the force fields on the ramp um, so do you want to go back to like in the middle of that pressure? Sorry, my, my replay is not jumping around. It's taking forever. Um, do you want to go back to like when you'd pushed over and forced his third to lift or back to earlier when you were defending his pressure? Uh, like my push out is fine. I just controlled it poorly. So. All right. And I, I, I want to do the pressure anyway. So we'll go to there. Okay, cool. Uh, of course, you know, like whatever, whatever dirty change ups you please. Remember, you can always with this, this format, you can be like, you know what really abuses his style if I do this one thing. So we can always go back to any point in the replay that pleases you, but I'm just trying to find the exact moment right now. It should be... Okay, so at 8 minutes 50, you push in and you get some nice force fields on his ramp, pick off a few bio units, lose a couple of adepts, but yeah, okay, you do let him down the ramp, right. That, that bit's... Yeah, that's a good bit to resume from. So how about I go to, let me see, I think just as you're pushing in. And what I'll do is, if it's not working, I'm going to add a second robo and disruptor dent at home. Okay. Uh, and sometimes adding colossi after disruptors, right? Yeah, I'll probably, uh, it depends what I feel like. Right. Sometimes I go both. Awesome, man. Um, well, I'm going to go straight to 8 minutes 40. Yeah, 8 minutes 40 is just when you're moving up in towards that third, so like, He's just kind of sieged up in the wrong direction. You're about to go into the third and, you know, potentially land those force fields on the ramp again. 
Um, yep. Let's do it. And the transition will be disruptors. Okay, awesome. Um, well, maybe. See how, see how I'm feeling. Or you might just kill him if there's an opening, right? You're, you're looking for the opportunity, right? If you find yeah, a good Yeah, so angle, if you notice, I haven't taken gas in my third base. So you do a lot of pressure. Just stuff like eight gateways. You're walking in the depths the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of harkens back to early Legacy of the Void. Like the Zest style. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what I've noticed a lot. I was saying that as well. I'm like... <laughs> just blink stalkers sentries adapts in large numbers you've got prism out um it's yeah it's zest man and uh it's not like this style ever just got magically broken and became unviable so um you get that fast fourth base up you've got a lot of map dominance a lot of meat and material to work with yeah so, i mean the main reason that stuff doesn't work is because of like tank pushes so like going straight for the quick third base but if you go uh stargate into oracles not only do you have like stasis ward but you can't just decide to go phoenix adept to like counter the tank push so yeah exactly that's how you can make it work awesome man all right well let's see if you can uh show some power of protoss again in this next game good luck have fun hopefully man. okay see ya almost there guys sorry for me just snacking on on my nuts casually just snacking on some nuts um they're almonds people in chat were asking almond nuts very good man okay they both said go go <laughs> see this is like Oh my god, my minerals. <laughs> I think we know where he's gonna resume if um if uh if probe wins. Similar situation to last game, but ooh, missed siege with the liberators there. And this time probe just wrecks the ramp with the full force fields. And a lot of that bio bleeds in and dies. And he might even get the CC. Yeah. I mean, I really thought this should have been a game-ending situation the first time it happened. Um, when Sitha got out positioned there and hadn't spent any of his money. But now especially, it's like that. Now, you'll notice both guys aren't spending their money too well. Um, this is one of the downsides of Recover Replay. And why pros don't necessarily use it as much is it does kind of throw off your rhythm a little bit. Um, there will be certain things you forget to do. Um, you suddenly have to focus on the micro, you're not exactly, you don't have your same timers of exactly how long until you need to, you know, inject or spend your, your money or warp in units. Um, but both players are back on top of it now, they're back in their rhythm. So, ooh. This is why normally players will just do fresh restarts over and over and over again and just do like hundreds of games. But obviously for this show format we try and compress it as much as possible so we can actually see the, the juicy details rather than the boring grind. For now, Probe did not get... Oh, he did get the third CC. Oh! Oh my god. Massive. Gets most of the Liberators straight away. Forces the Siege up early. Immortal in the open. Oh, but great force field. So many Marauders go down there. Probe with a sick trade. He's got four bases, guys. He's in such a good position. Um... You know, up against the two base Terran Seath is pretty much all in. Losing those Liberators, those important, valuable tech units that make his push unstoppable if he gets set up in the right position. Is that Widowmine ever going to fire? Oh my god, it just keeps changing targets. That's so funny. That Widowmine's just not firing. Just sitting there. Uh, Adept's in here doing damage. Yeah, Probe is... That's actually so hilarious. <laughs> Doesn't get the other one though. Seether is on the ropes. He is getting smashed. Adepts, Immortals, Stalkers. We got Oracles there. Ooh, okay. Nicely done here. Revelation going down. Yeah, Probe's just going to clean it up. Really good play from him. 
going to escape with that war prism. Shuts down both sides of the map. He's still on four bases, and he's like, yep, now I kill you. I'm mining way more than you. I've got a strong economy. I'm still building probes, warping in more adepts. Uh, he's going to start the disruptor down the second robo for that disruptor transition. This is such a cool style. I miss this style. I love this style. When I was first learning PVT and Legacy, um, I used to use this a lot. Fell out of favor, but still very powerful. I mean, the rotation here is the good part, right? How do you as Seether with this poultry force cover both angles? If Probe just rotates, he can catch Seether mid-rotation and, and wreck him. But looking at the numbers, I think Probe realizes, yeah. He's like, nah, I've just got the numbers, man. So he just jumps in, shuts down the libs, adepts on everything, and uh, GG. Noise. <laughs> Lots of quick regames today. This is kind of cool. I kind of like having a lot of quick regames. It's it's fun. It's it's different. Um, let's give Seath that, that call. Let's see how it goes. GG's. <laughs> that one went went south pretty fast, but it was pretty funny. We we resumed. Yeah, I forgot you where his army was. <laughs> you mentioned something about your resource count as well. So um, yeah, only fifteen hundred minerals. Casual fifteen hundred. <laughs> No worries. To keep in mind, there was a lot of multitasking going on before that point. Remember, in the initial game, there was a lot of, a lot of back and forth, and you were on that. You know, in his natural, you kept killing adepts, and you killed a few probes as well, and you kept warping in adepts, and they kept dying, and your main army was kind of distracting him at the same time. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess I'll try and remind you of where the army is next time as well. I'll try and make sure I'm on top of that. I haven't done this show in a while, so. There's so many like little things I need to try and remind you guys of to make sure you don't forget where you are in the game um, when we resume, especially the guy who just won. So where do you think we should go back to? Do you think we can resume from all that the exact way same point? To, well, I'd go all the way back to where I loaded my medevacs up the second lot because I forgot them. Like I sent when I had four instead uh, of two. Yes. So that was slow. Yeah. And there's a lot of bad macro in there too. Okay. Cool, cool. So I'm going to go back to about that seven minute mark. So for you, it's about let's clean up the build. Your, your improvements are really about like, let's, let's just do the build the way you want to do it properly, right? Like you just want to clean it up, make yeah. sure it's efficient. Now, one thing that did happen is you only had four Marines and two mines. Would you still go even with only four Marines and two mines or would you wait for a few more Marines? No, I think another set of units. Okay. There was a slight gap in be close. There's a slight gap in production. I think six marines and two mines you'd still go with, right? Since yeah, I think it would be eight, won't it? Because there's four at a time. I don't know. Let's yeah. Uh, I guess, I. you know what? To be honest, I think... Yeah, okay, I'll wait for the next cycle to come out. So it's going to be seven minutes. And there we go. So, okay, about seven minutes, 20. Now... This is right after you snapped both of those oracles. <laughs> yeah, that was that was <laughs> that pretty awesome happen. this time around, right? <laughs> um, should we be nice and go back and let him keep those oracles alive? Or... Yeah, we'll remind him too. Okay, so we'll go back to that initial restart point of seven minutes. And Sounds good. No, 6.55, because seven minutes is literally when the oracles are on top of the units. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Awesome, we'll get this going. All right, um, so you're going to change it up by sending your second drop across the map faster, spending yep. your money better, uh, and then obviously not letting him just walk up and force field yeah. your ramp because of the, the disorientation I'll probably from resuming. push the Marines forward or mine set up to knock out of position or something. Awesome source. All right, let's do this. Let's dive into this next game. It's going to be 6 minutes 55. Trying to make sure I remember that exact time so I don't screw it up. Whoa, that's watch a replay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> wrong, wrong button. That was meant to be a recover game. It's all right. Good one. I'm an idiot. Let's hop out of there. We'll get that We'll get that up um, in just a, a moment. While we've got you on the call, Seether, um, almonds or pistachios? Which which nut do you prefer? Uh, pistachios. That's. I think that's like... That's like but a, if it's with like a, chocolate or something in a dessert, almonds. Oh, yeah. Almonds go really well when they're like candied and stuff, actually. But um, pistachios are those. so good, man. You can't, yeah. you, can't, you can't go wrong with that. I think me and you are both with, um, with Zanados in chat. I haven't had pistachios in forever, though. 
I hate the ones that are closed though, and like you like can't get them open. You gotta get like a hammer or something. <laughs> there's like there's like a, a, a tiny slit, so you want to like shove a fingernail in there, but you know you're gonna snap a fingernail off if you try to do that. Um, I'm just gonna like rip your rip your hand open. All right, recover game is on the way, guys. Um, good luck, Sitha. Better macro, letting him keep his oracles alive. So we're gonna remind him about the oracles at the very start. Um, this is just when you're pressuring out front his base, and yeah, about probably 45 seconds or a minute from when you're going to load up that second drop. Good luck, have fun, man. Cool. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, guys. Of course, using this recovered game for this What If Wednesdays feature. Oh, cashews are amazing. You know what? I bought some candied cashews um, just the other week, Senju. Oh, oh my God. Dude, those got destroyed in like three days. It was so good. Oracles are, yeah. Babysit. <laughs> Babysit those oracles, Probu. Here we go. So guys, this is Seetha's, uh, Seetha's, oh, is he gonna? And he babysits the oracles, good job. All right, so this is Seetha's regame. Now we wanna watch from his point of view, is he gonna keep spending his resources a bit better this time, not float 1500 minerals? And is he going to send that drop across a little bit faster? His Viking did just go in. Fuck, I didn't notice that in the replay. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The Viking wasn't doing shit in any of these games anyway. One time it killed two probes in like the very first game. Since then it's done nothing. Um, so no big deal. So yeah, he's going to send that drop across a lot quicker. He's going to be building depots. He's going to be really focused on macroing better. And this is like, this is how macro players improve, guys. Um, you know, solid... This is how most, most pros are macro players as well. Just looking to make these slight changes in their play to be more efficient, to, to try and reach that that dream of optimal play, which you never actually hit. And uh, yeah, they're doing a they're doing a good job. So Dap does see this. Seetha actually grouping everything up this time around. Not going for the multi-prong. Fair enough. Let's go back to everyone's camera. So Seetha's resource is much better. He's macroing like a boss. Probe here. He's just massing up these gateway units. Remember guys, he's looking for that damage. He's going to go 1-1 one, one, and Glaives are going to time out. So he has Glaives 1-1 one, one, and Blink. And he's got a fourth behind it. But remember, low gas style. That's what makes this style so powerful. Because all of these meaty fighting units are not gas heavy. So while Seath is going up to these fancy tech units like Liberators and Heavy Widow Mine Counts and lots of Medivacs, on the other side for Probe, it's just like, nah, I just need minerals. That's all I need. Now, Liberators are out. There's two of them, but he needs to get those down there. There we go. He sets the rally point now. And Seath are much better this time watching the army movements of Probe. He really needs to keep those Liberators safe, though. This army can pounce on you so fast. And Oh, Adepts! Adept's derping around a little bit. See? Oh, Probe's looking for his angle. He's found it. He's found his angle. Half the army here on its own. Force fields on the ramp to separate. Oh, man. Probe is abusing this map really well. Constantly getting these force fields on this ramp. And Seether is in a lot of trouble. His army starting to spill down now into the open. But those Liberator Zones just aren't doing anything. And I think the moment he unsieges, he's going to get blinked on. Oh, the Widow Mines and the Liberate is on Siege. He's trying to come in. Seether doing a good job on the back foot. But I think it's just a little bit too little too late. Yeah. His army's wrecked. Accidental move command there. Damn! Probe is just so decisive with this timing. Hey, hey. <laughs> the power of Protoss, man. Or the power of Probe Toss, should we say. Yeah, I got screwed by that harass in that position. <laughs> yeah, that, um... Was that from a warp prism, or was that just a shade in from the left? Uh, I think it was a shade in. I didn't see. <laughs> I'm, I'm loading up the replay. It looks like... So he gets... Okay, yeah. He he actually warps them into the back of your natural off a warp prism. Oh, Six yeah. Flies in there, warps them in, and, uh, and does that. And then, obviously, the force field's on the ramp again, because you're distracted by the harass. So your army kind of ends up in this generic split. He just moves in. Force fields half, liberators aren't in the fight. And that's the whole thing, right? Your whole army rests on these couple of technical tools, right? The liberators dish out crazy damage, and he can't really focus them without going into range of the widow mines and taking big hits. So 
they kind of create space, right? They don't allow him to just like jump on top, snipe down your technical units and then overwhelm. But the moment you're not set up, your army gets wrecked, right? Yeah. Okay. So I also didn't have drop on the map that time because I hit the tower and then joined up, but then he got a revelation off, so... Ah, so do you want to go back from that same point and try to go... Yeah, I think so. Awesome. I think multi-prong's way better here. Um, Even if I don't attack right away, just having them on the map is a big deal. Exactly. It makes... <laughs> I can tell you as a Protoss player, I, I really would love if Terran players would group their army a lot... Uh, up a lot more and just let me revelate it and then just like stand my one <laughs> army in front of their one army because it makes your life as a Protoss player a shitload easier. I can tell you that, man. It's my least favorite style in the game. <laughs> the Iago style. Group up and overwhelm the front with your macro. <laughs> Alright, 656. Once again, I'm going to tell Probe to babysit those oracles. Um, good luck, have fun, man. Kick some ass. Hopefully. Alright guys, so what are the big things that Seath is focusing on in this next game? It's going to be, watch out for the harassment, be a little bit more map aware, um, keep his eyes open for that, and don't let himself react as poorly. So for him, the reaction is going to be, I didn't get him to really vocalize it, but we kind of, this is, this is something I should have got him to vocalize it there, my bad. Basically, he's going to say to himself, watch minimap a little bit more, number one. Number two, when I see drop, have a cleaner reaction. Box units, stim, A, move them there, pull SCVs away. That's done in a very minute amount of time. The distraction is eradicated. This allows him to put his full focus on having his spotting marines out, watching the rotation of Probe's army, and having his army set up so he can't get split off by that ramp in those force fields. Can he actually execute it? We'll have to find out. Let's see. This is the exact same restart as last game, so I've told Probe once again, babysit those oracles, it's the same point as last time. And uh, Sifa here is going to, once again, be aiming to have that cleaner macro. We're going to see just how well he can actually execute this. And remember, he regrouped on the tower last time and got revelated altogether. He wants to avoid that. He wants these to be out as separate groups of drops. He does not want them together, so these guys should be picking up right about now. Yeah, there we go. Two, um, two mines and about ten. Yeah, ten marines in there, and uh, it's looking good. Probe here. Oh, I love this move. This is a great move, by the way. He saw Seether coming up to the tower, so he gets his adept and he shifts, clicks it. He says, "Move away and move back," because he knows after the clear, after clearing the tower, Seether's going to move away with his army. So the adept comes back, reclaims the tower, kills the marine on it. And he's just like, oh, cool, I can see where you are now. But look at this rotation from Seether, changing things up, realizing that in this moment of repetition, the Protoss is going to get better and better at defending this pressure with each game. And this is why the defender normally is advantaged in this uh, in this format, right? So Seether here, he changed up his rotation. Main army moved right, drop came to the left. Really needs to pick those units up and get out of there. Oh, does just barely get out of there. Does get away. He's forced a bit of pressure here. But how's the macro doing at home? Liberators are already out. He's got more bio in the way. Second star put on the way. I don't like that. He should have built it on the, the reactor. Uh, slight APM waste having to lift that. Um, and he really needs to land that factory as well uh, on a new reactor. How many Widow Mines have we got out? We've got six Widow Mines. I think that's enough for this army. But oh no, Adepts still have the Watchtowers. Oh god, Probe warping in Adepts here to distract while sending his army to intercept the double drop. Seath is in massive trouble right now. Much cleaner reaction to the drop this time around. Pulls the workers, A moves his units, doesn't get as thrown off, but he's already floating minerals right as his medevacs are boosting into Blink Stalker territory. They're going to run out of boost just as the stalkers find them, and that's a dead double drop. Oh, okay. One one medevac survives for now, but there's no, there's no dead space. There's no safe area. Those units are just screwed, man. Yep. GG's. GG's. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. A question from Xanatos in chat while we've got a slight downtime. He says, are you going to post the coaching from before onto YouTube? Yeah, I think that I think there was a few nuggets in there that were really good. And when there's a few really useful nuggets, I do like to post that up and share it. So I probably will. 
uh, be sharing that. I've already got a lot of videos to share on the weekend. So some of these coaching videos I might save for while I'm on holiday and just kind of release them steadily so that there is a constant stream of content out of my YouTube. We'll have to see. Back to the game at hand. Probe here is just playing so well, man. Probe's so good. Uh, like I said, Probe really is such a great player at the moment. Sitha, he, he said he has been struggling in TVP a little bit. Um, and especially against Probe, uh, no one in Australia seems to be able to consistently beat him at the moment. He's just he's just crushing face. But uh, it's kind of cool to see he's, he's making certain adjustments, but Probe's finding more mistakes. He finds those drops that walk through the Watchtower Vision. This is a good setup, good little skirmish here from uh, Seether, and raises the Depot Wall. Finally, Seether getting in control of this game a little bit. He's up to eight Liberators. Is there splash damage on the way? The Colossus Bay slash Disruptor Den has only just started. So I actually really think Seether's position is a little bit better. But this is something which got forgotten. The upgrades. He's been under so much pressure that mistakes are being forced out of Seether. And I feel like Seether is such a, a good player if you let him control the pace of the game. But that's exactly what Probe is not letting him do. Probe is like, no, fuck you. Nah, fuck you. Nah, fuck you. Nah, fuck you. And just kind of punching him in the face repeatedly. Um, Australian style. And yeah, it's... it's He's hanging on. And he definitely could still win this game, but it's one of these things where I feel like with the way he's been defending and, and dealing with certain things and even some of the bad luck, the way Seed has been macroing, if he had kept the double drop alive, or if he had his 2-2 finishing now, like shit man, he'd be in such a good position. As it is, it's still going to be a very scary mass liberator push here. Six libs out, three more on the way. Um, but I think it's actually time for him to push. I think he needs to go out there and just jump on this army. It's just very awkward with Widow Mines and Liberators because... If you don't have enough bio to actually, like, contest them in a straight-off fight, uh, they're just going to focus down on your libs and mines before they set up, and suddenly, you know, everything looks kind of nasty, and the revelation makes you even more nervous. But especially with what we see here, you know, Probe coming around with all these counterattacks, um, luckily Planetary Fortress will defend that a little bit later on, but uh, Seetha not responding perfectly. He's actually just A-moved those units really sloppily. That's what I call the pig. It's where you don't A-move to where the units are actually shading to. You just kind of haphazardly click in the base and hope it works out and look at this opportunistically probe jumps on the main army because he's keeping Seetha on the back foot and look at his map vision he's got stasis traps and adepts sitting literally everywhere a disruptor shot finally joins in gets the money shot because Seetha's on the back foot seetha has got his attention pulled in so many places so I definitely think maybe Seetha should have queued up a liberator down around the left hand side of the map that's one suggestion I'm going to give him why not queue up a liberator number one number two why not start those upgrades a little bit quicker? Okay, what about the other thing? Get out there and push. I think as soon as he's on 180 supply, he can contest this army, even if he's on equal upgrades, as long as there's no disruptors. But I think he needs to be the one jumping on top of Probe rather than the other way around, just because like the, the milliseconds in terms of acting rather than reacting actually changes everything. Because um, look, every time Probe gets in here and kills a few more workers, trades against a small number of bio like this, it's, it's just great for Probe, and it's bad for him. At the home, we've got Stargates going down with Fleet Beacon, Disruptors, Templar Archives, DT Shrine, and while Liberated did make its way down here, I think this should have happened way earlier. And, um, you know, oh, looks like he did, did hit that base as well. So he killed some Probes. Up to 12 Probes killed this game does weaken the economy of Probe just a little bit. But remember, there's no Librain here, guys. This is, like, not a, a long, long, long-term army. This is a mid-game, kind of late mid-game army where you, like, want to be hitting before you're maxed or as you're maxed, and you want to be forcing the trades right then before your opponent gets, like, six Disruptors or Storm or something like that. And Probe just keeps finding a hole. He just keeps probing around. And uh, as, as he says, any hole's a goal for Probe. He's going to find... And speaking of balls, oh my god, oh, oh, shit, man. Jesus, that's that's powerful. Probe um, gets a few great hits, but Seether's jumping on top of the army. If he wasn't getting his uh, main base wrecked by Adepts back at home, I'd actually say that might have been okay for him. But he's down 20 army supply. I don't know where all that supply is for Probe. I guess he's still got the Stalkers and Adept alive. But these Adepts are going to start killing barracks, for God's sake. Like, this is... Too much harassment. And uh, even though he's still got actually not that bad an SCV count at almost 50, he's got four bases. If he can't get on top of this pressure right now, then he's just screwed. And yeah, his bio is not there. These adepts continuing to do damage. Army supply is still equal. It is 2 2 versus 1 1, but it's about to be 2 1. And we've got Storm and Colossi on the way. Once they hit the field, it's, it's completely over. Um, these adepts finally going to get shut down. Probe 
He's up to 47 SCVs killed. And Seath is not even rebuilding them anymore. He's just like, man, I'm, I'm stuck on, on so few bases right now. These Liberators need to kill that. Kill it. Finally, finally. Back at home, are there High Templar? Yes. High Templar, Disruptors, four Disruptors, multiple High Templar already with Storm Energy. Storm finishing in the next 30 seconds. Multiple Colossi with range going to be out in about a minute's time or 40 seconds time. Uh, yeah, Seetha doesn't really have a window here. So he's going to start dropping. He says, okay, I know I, I maybe can't win with the frontal push. I'm getting 3-3. I'm getting more libs. I'm getting more bio. I really think Seetha should be rebuilding SCVs and looking to secure a fifth if he wants to play this way. DT is now going to hit the icing on top of the shit cake, which probe is force feeding into Seetha's mouth right now. Um, yeah. Seetha's, Seetha's just like, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. And probe's just shoveling it in. Um, he just, yeah, this is, this is really bad position now for Seetha. I think probe's got this one. Um, unless this drop can just totally rip apart the production. Yeah, 35 SCVs. The economy is way lower. Let's bring up that economy tab. Uh, I mean, a lot of mules down right now. A single mule down? I don't know. Apparently there's a mule down. Revelation's still going down. Look at Probe's map vision. This is the real secret, I think, to, to this game and, and how he's been kicking ass quite so hard. And I guess we could go right back to when Seetha um, messed up with this, but definitely Seetha needed to find a way to sneak pressure down along the bottom side of the map. Liberators or drops hitting those bases. He needed to find a way to put the pressure back on Probe. Or to shut down Probe's pressure, one or the other. It's going to be interesting to, to see what Seetha says uh, as what he thinks he should do to change up to make it work for him. Nice setup here. That's a lot of Liberators. Do they have range? I, st I think they don't They don't have range. Nope. A couple of Disruptor shots with their, the Marauders and Marines are going to take down at least one of these Nexuses. This base on the right gets, uh, army on the right gets cleaned up though. You know, Seetha here, he finds a pretty decent engagement. Probe's been like owning so much that he actually let himself kind of get pushed back into a bad position. Uh, Probe should have been able to meet that army up there and just storm and blink all over it, but wasn't in position, was distracted by the drop, does lose two mining bases, um, and suddenly it's like, well, maybe Seetha can pull back from here if he can get a fifth and actually play a longer game, but no, moving forward's not going to work. This is going to get wrecked. Um, storms land all over the army. The blink forward will come underneath that. The Colossi splash is big and uh, very well played by Probe. Got penned into a corner there. Let's see what he says. 